Welcome back to a FIFA Jack Gaming, and thank you for watching. Today we're going to open up three packs of Innistrad Midnight Hunt in celebration of Halloween. Halloween's going to end up starting us up, opening up a box of all of next month. So stay tuned for more Innistrad Midnight Hunt action. We're going to start with pack one. Let's see what we open up with the art card. Whip on the other side. Insectile Abduration. It's by Matthews, or Matt Stewart. It's number 22 out of 81. Then we got the Mountain. Geist Wave. Costs one and a blue for an instant. Return a target non-land permit to its owner's hand. If you control that permit, draw a card. Devilish cover up costs two and two blue for an instant. Counter a target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into the owner's gra graveyard. You may shuffle four card or four target cards from your graveyard into your library. And there we got a Crossroads Candle Guide. Cost is four. It's a Scarecrow. When it enters the battlefield, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Tap, add one mana of any color. It's a 3-4 body. John Hart Revenger. Cost is three and a green. It's a Human Warlock. It's a 2-4 body. And when it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Tap it, add one mana of any color. Sunset Ravelry costs one and a white for a sorcery. If an opponent has more than life than you, you gain four life. If an opponent controls more creatures than you, you put two one one white human creatures in the battlefield. If an opponent has more cards than you, draw a card. That's an uncommon. The next guy is another uncommon. Gavney John Guard. Costs one and two white for a human soldier. Has ward one. That means it costs us one to target it. So they have to pay one extra and then do whatever spell that they're end up playing. If it's neither day nor night, it becomes day as it enters the battlefield. When day becomes night or night becomes day, Look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card with a converted value of three or less from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in any order. All right, so we got some fancy art coming around. We got the Bird of Meyer. Costs us two and a green. It's a human archer werewolf. Has reach and daybound. So we're going to end up having a special mechanic where it has daybound and nightbound. Once it becomes that, we have to keep track of what's exactly going on. It only changes on the person who controls the turn. So to have it daybound, it'll be com coming in like that. But to make it nightbound, you have to play no spells. So if I'm the person that's controlling it, the game or controlling the, has the turn and everything, and I don't play any spells, it will become nightbound. Talking about Nightbound, we got the Ring Shredder. It's a werewolf. Has reach and it's a 3 5 body. And then to change it from Nightbound to Daybound again, you have to play two was it, spells on that turn. Talking about Daybound, we got the Hound Tamer. Costs us two and a green for a human werewolf. Has trample. Has a uh, activated mana cost of three and a green. We get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature. That's on the daybound side, which has a 3-3 three, three body. Over on the nightbound side, it becomes Untamed Pup. It's a werewolf, trample. Other wolves and werewolves that you control have trample. And then it has the same activated cost of a 3 and a green. We get to put one, one counter on something. And it has a 4-4 four, four body. Then we have the Flame Bang Brigade. It costs us three and a red 
for a human werewolf. You could pay one and a red, and then it gets plus one plus oh and gains first strike until end of turn. And it's a three four body. That's on the day bound side. On the night bound side, it becomes Fang Blade Excavator. Man, I'm killing the names today. It's a werewolf. Has to convert or activate a cost of a one and a red to gain plus one plus O oh, and first strike. And then it also has another one of pay four and a red. Creatures you control get plus two plus O oh, until end of turn. And while it's on this night bound side, it has a body of four five. Here comes our mythic. Cost is one black and one for a tainted adversary. It's a zombie. Death touch. When tainted adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay two and a black any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many plus one plus one counters on it. Then create twice that many two two black zombie token creatures with decay. It has a two three body. And then our foil is a jack o' lantern. Cost is one for an artifact. Pay one, tap it, sacrifice it, exile up to one target card from a graveyard. Draw a card. Or we could pay one, exile jack o' lantern from your graveyard, add one mana of any color. That was an interesting pack. But that's one of three. Let's see what we open up in the third pack. Gotcha. It's really only the second pack. Since that was the trick, let's see if we get any treats. The art card. I think it looks like that. But over on the other side, that is a mountain by Dan Mufford. That's art number 79 out of 81. We got the Foily Swamp. Got a special home for that guy. Tam or tapping at the window. Cost is one and a green. Has a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. Has a flashback cost. So flashback is when you can play it from your graveyard for whatever the flashback cost is. The flashback cost is a green and two. Then we have a Shadow Beast sighting. Cost is three and a green for a sorcery. Create a four, four green beast token. Flashback costs up six and a green. Then we have a Candle Trap. Cost is one white for an enchantment. It goes on a creature. Enchanted creature it ends up gaining Defender. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt by the enchanted creature. Then it has Covering. Covering's another unique mechanic that we have in this. You have to have three different powers to be able to activate it. But once you do, we can pay two and a white, sacrifice it, and then we get to exile that enchanted creature. It's kind of funny that we have the Candle Trap because we also have the Candle Grove Witch. Cost is one and a white. And then it also has Covering, but when it has Covering, it gains flying until end of turn. It's a 2-2 two, two body. Our first uncommon is John Hart Wardens. Cost is 1, a white, and a green. It's a human warlock. Has vigilance. Has a body of toughness of 3-3. Three, three. And it also has that covering stuff. When it has the covering, we get plus 1, plus 0 oh, until end of turn. John Hart Mentor. Cost is a green and two. It's a human warlock. When it enters the battlefield, you get to create a 1-1 one, one white human token. And it also has covering, but it has a 0-4 body. You can pay five a green. Target creature you control gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Holy smokes. That's four cards in a row that has covering. Oh, let's make that five. <laughs> Contortionist Torp causes X and a green. It enters the battlefield with X amount of plus one plus one counters on it. 
And then if we have the covering cost, we get to put a plus one, plus one counter on a target creature we control. Its base power and toughness is zero, zero. Heirloom Mirror costs one and a black for an artifact. Pay one, tap it, pay one life, discard a card, draw a card, mill a card, and then put a ritual counter on Heirloom Mirror. Then, if there's three or more ritual counters on it, remove them and transform it. Activate this only as a sorcery. So the mirror flips over into the Inherited Fiend. It's a demon flying. Pay two and a black exiled target creature card from a graveyard. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Has a 4-4 four, four body. Harvest Stride Infiltrator costs two and a red. It's a human werewolf that has trample and daybound. In the daybound side, it has a three, two body toughness. Or on the flip side, it's the Harvest Tide Eslanulant. It's a werewolf, has trample. It's a four, four body. And then we got a mythic. Ireland, the Pax Hope. Costs two, a red, and a green. It's a legendary planeswalker, which is Arlen, has Daybound. And then it has four loyalty when it comes in, and it has two different ways that we can end up changing it. You get plus one, or until your next turn, you may play cast creature cards as though as they had flash. And each creature you control that enters the battlefield enters with an additional plus one, plus one counter. Sounds pretty good. Or the neg three is create two. 2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens. Pretty solid. That's going to go nice with the dex process that we're going to end up having. Our foil is Secrets of the Key. Causes one blue. It's an instant. Investigate. If this spell was cast from the graveyard, investigate twice. So investigate is when we get to create a colorless uh, token that's a clue. We can pay two, sacrifice it, and draw a card. The flashback cost of it is a three and a blue. And then we have a tree folk as a little token card. It has reach, and this creature has a power and toughness equal to the number of lands that you control. Wonder if we end up opening up the card that brings that token out to play. Two out of two packs being mythics. Holy crap. All right, let's pop open pack three, see if we can keep this train going. Art card is upside down. Fix it right on up. There's the art side. Over on the other side is a Village Reavers by Nestro Adonis Lean. It's a number 45 out of 81. We got a mountain. Mora Behemoth costs four and a black for a giant zombie. Or should I be saying a zombie giant? Has a 7-3 body. Has an additional cost to cast this card, sacrifice a creature, or pay one and a black. It has menace. That means it only can be blocked by two or more creatures. Then we have a blood pack that costs two and a black for an instant target player Draws two cards and then loses two life. Javanese Silversmith costs three and a white for a human soldier. When it enters the battlefield, we get to put two plus one plus one counters on each of up to two target creatures. Has a two three body. Search party captain costs three and a white for a human soldier. This spell costs us one less for each creature you attack with this turn. When the search party captain enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card. Has a 2-2 body. Diagraph Rebirth costs three, a black, and a green. It's a sorcery. This spell costs us one less to cast for each creature that died this turn. Return a target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Has a flashback cost of five, a green, and a black. That was the first uncommon. The next one is 
The Dread Hound costs four and a black. And another black. So it costs two black and four. It's a demon dog who has a 6-6 six, six body. That's one big dog. When it enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Whenever a creature dies or a creature card is put into the graveyard from the library, each opponent loses one life. We have a fancy art of a John Hart Revenator. Costs us three and a green. If our human warlock, when it enters the battlefield, you gain three life. Tap it, add one mana of any color. Covert Cut Porse costs two and a green for a human rogue. Has a 2-1 body. When it enters the battlefield, destroy a target creature you don't control that was dealt damage this turn. Has a Disturb cost of four and a black. Disturb is when we can cost it from our graveyard and then have it transform for us at the Disturb cost. So when it flips over to the other side, it's the Covertus Geist. It's a Spirit Rogue. Flying Death Touch. If it would be put into the graveyard anyway, exile it instead. That's a 2-2 body. We have a Bird of Meyer. Cost is 2 and a green. And we already covered this guy because we have the fancy art one as well. So we're going to skip that guy, go over to the next. Wake to Slaughter. Cost is 3, a red, and a black for a rare. That's a sorcery. Choose up to 2 target creature cards. In your graveyard, an opponent chooses one of them. Return that card to your hand. Return to the battlefield under your control. It gains haste, exile at the end of your next end step. Has a flashback cost of four, a black, and a red. And then the foil is other worldly gaze. Cost is a blue. Instant. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put any of them into your graveyard and rest back on the top of your library in the order. As a flat back cost of a blue and one. And then we have a zombie token. That's that run of the packs. So starting out of the gate of the box is a couple big bombs that we ended up getting. Super excited about this little Arling cord. Well, what would you like out of the packs? Let us know down in the comments below. If you're liking the content that we're pointing out, like, subscribe, and hit that little bell icon to be notified about any of our future content. Thank you for watching, and until next time, we'll see you later.